that. Here is my 8 by 10. Here's my 5 by 7. I want to take the 5 by 7 and put it inside the 8 by 10 image and I want it to be perfectly centered. So the first thing I have to do is select the image. Then I'm going to come over here and grab the move tool because I need to use the move tool to drag and drop. And then in order to place this directly in the center, you can see there are a little bit of a border thing that says, yes, I if I release the mouse now, I'm in that you know destination document. But if I hold down the shift key, then release the mouse and wait for my hard drives to zoom up. There you go, it's placed smack dab in the center. All right, so I can come over here now and close this image off because I don't need it anymore. And because I've made a major change to my image, before I go any further, I'm going to want to save this. So I'm just going to call this one H-O-C-K-E-Y, Hockey Player Layer. And then I'm going to just do a Command S or Control S to save this. And it's going to go inside the same document that we uh, opened up our raw file in, so uh, we're keeping everything together. All right, so now the next thing I want to do is I want to use a black background as opposed to a white background, and there are a number of ways to go about doing this. One of the easiest ways is if you were just to do an invert, Command I or Control I on the PC, you'll invert the colors, and the opposite of White is black. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is click on my hockey player layer and I want to apply a stroke around the image to just give some depth and dimension. In order to do that, I'm going to go into the layer menu and I'm going to come down to layer style and I'm going to choose stroke. In this dialog box, we can see that the structure for this is set to 13 pixels. I don't know whether that's too much or not enough because the color of the stroke matches the color of my background. I have to change the color of the stroke. So I'm going to click on this color chip. I'll be presented with the color picker dialog box. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to type in there. I'm going to put this at 90% brightness as opposed to having it at 100% white. I think that might be a little bit too contrasty. So I'm just going to leave it at that and I'm going to click OK. Now you can start to see the stroke I'm applying here and if I were to increase this as an just for example sake you can see that when we have a stroke set to outside we end up with rounded corners. I don't want to have my stroke on the outside so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the position menu and I'm going to choose inside. Now you can see that I have a nice 90 degree corners in there and maybe I'm going to go with white. I think maybe I should, just to see. Yes, I'm going to go with white because I want to see more separation um, here where the ice meets the there. But it was as easy as just coming back and clicking on this and setting it to red. And it's a live update that we have. That's so nice that we have that. Okay, so I am 100% brightness. There you go. And I'm fine with everything else that's inside here at this point in time, so I'm going to click OK. Now, once you've clicked OK, I'm just going to do a Command S to save. But I want you to take a look over at the Layers panel over here, and you'll see that to the right of the name in the Layer Tile, you're going to see a lowercase f and x. And then below the image, by default, when you click OK in the Layer Style dialog box, the effects that we apply are shown to us. If this is occupying too much space in your layer panel, you can click on the little black arrow that points up to you know show and hide the contents that we have in there. If you want to see what the image looks like before and after, click on the eyeball, and there we go. Eyeball on, eyeball off. All right. Clicking on the stroke eyeball will do identically the same as clicking on the effects because we only have one effect, stroke. But if I had multiple effects in here, then I can come in and just click on their individual eyeballs to see what that effect has with and without it showing in the image. All right. So now that we've got that done, I'm just going to do a Command S. I'm just going to collapse that because I don't need to revisit that anymore. And what I want to do is put some type up here and then some type down here. If I actually had the logo for the 
the team, then I might even put that logo up in a corner over here or down in the corner over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the type tool by clicking on the big letter T over in the tool panel. I'm going to wait for my type tool to initialize. Alrighty then, and I can come over here and I can realize that I don't have a color I'm really interested in uh, to start typing with, so I think I'm just going to go over here and choose white and click on my document to start the process. Now this is the Syracuse Crunch versus Hamilton Bulldogs AHL hockey game, so S-Y-R Syracuse I guess so. Versus Hamilton. Alright, so I'm going to just see what that looks like there. I think I need my fonts to be a little bit larger. So I'm just going to come over here and choose a 30 font and put that in here. Alright, and then what I may do is just reduce that font down to maybe 18. Ew, no, maybe I'll come up to 24. There you go. So it's not quite as big as... There you go. Syracuse versus Hamilton. Hmm. Maybe I can go larger. All right. If I... I always, when I'm finished or still debating what I'm going to be doing with my type, what I generally do is I click on the Move tool, which deactivates the text. And if I want to select my text again. There are many ways to do it. I think one of the easiest ways is just come over here and double click on the big letter T in the layers panel and you'll end up with this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go up to 36. Let's see. Now I'm going to have to adjust this after again but I'm not that concerned about it. Now if I go up to there that's way too big. Yeah, that's way, way, way too big. I'm wondering if I can come down here and type in 42. I don't think so. Oh my God, are you kidding me? There you go. All right. Um, thought I could come down here and just type in 42, but it's not going to do that. It's not allowing me to do that. Hey, that's just odd. But it doesn't let you do that. Oh my goodness, now my computer's crashing. Undo typing. Undo typing. Redo typing. Never mind. I'm going into my history panel. This is silly. And I'm going to go over here and grab the type tool. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to get where I want to with this. And the keyboard shortcut to size up your text when you have your text highlighted is hold down the command and the shift key. That would be control shift on the PC and then tap the period or the greater than symbol and you will be able to increase your font size visually. There we go. And now I have that. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to just do the opposite. Command shift, control shift and the minus key just to bring that visually down rather than trying to play with numbers. All right, so now we have that set there. What I want to do now is put the player's name down at the bottom. So I'm going to go over here and grab the type tool once again. I'm going to click in my document, and the player is G-O-F-F. -F. And his position is center, and his number is 9. Alrighty then, so now let's just see, can I put a space hyphen, space in between there, and space hyphen, space, there you go, alright. So now we've got this setup, that setup, I love those little hyphens in this font, alright. What I want to do now is I want to center my text to the whole document, 